Hey, 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 it's W5HRO. Well, I have the Ameritron all connected and working. Um, let me show you. I'm on CW just to uh, let you see how much power it's putting out. It's a 2,000 watt scale. I'm getting like 800 watts carrier out, which is about what that single tube will do. And that's the max. It's designed for like 700 watts out with uh, 3,000 volts, and I got just under 3,000 volts. Um, but it uh, it's working. I mean, it's definitely putting out the power. So it peaks up. I'm on dummy load now. One thing I noticed, uh, first of all, I was, of course, using my D104 with the FET buffer, and I put this thing in audio monitor mode. If you do on this 590 uh, radio, this SG, even the uh, older ones, you have a, uh, where is it, CTX monitor mode. And you just uh, put your headphones in, and this is the audio control for and uh, you can hear yourself. You can hear what it sounds like. And I started talking. I was getting all this buzzing on voice peaks really bad. I thought, well, I guess I'm getting RF in the mic. Well, turns out the first part of it was is that uh, my audio, this audio amplifier, listen to what happens when I transmit. Wait a minute, where is it? Oh, it only happens when I'm on my antenna. When I'm not on the antenna, it doesn't do it. I'm on dummy load, see it goes away. But it was, the speaker was buzzing bad. And uh, when I'm transmitting on voice peaks on the D104, it's buzzing a little bit too. And it's, I've, uh, I've got to filter the, uh, at, I got to change the, uh, that FET buffer amp. What, if you saw my previous circuit, I don't know, I, I thought I had it around here somewhere. I probably do. It's, uh, I've got, a, I, the circuit shows a 4.7 meg resistor at the input to the FET with a, uh, point, a 0.01 microfarad capacitor in parallel with it. And that's to divide the voltage off on the D104 so it's never any more than 4 volts max. Because some of these older mics, these D104s, they run hot, they'll produce 8 volts peak to peak. So you got to kind of limit it. And that, that, they're basically these elements, when they work, they're the same thing as a 0.001 capacitor. So if you put a 0.001 capacitor to ground, it divides the voltage in half. And uh, right now, I don't have, when I, years ago when I first built that buffer, I had that cap in there with the 10 meg uh, resistor, and that's what I've got a 10 meg. And I need to actually change that 10 meg to the 4.7 meg and uh, add, re-add that 0.001 cap or that 0.01 cap back in there across it. And if that doesn't take care of all the RF, I'll put one on the output. But I'm gonna have to toroid all my cables behind the desk. I'm, I've gotta pull this desk out probably sometime later this week and I gotta put toroids on everything and uh, filter the whole thing and to take care of all that. But uh, I, need, I probably should check and see, I just switched over to dummy load and I should check to see, cause this thing was buzzing really bad at four power. It's not doing it with the antenna. I mean, it's not doing it on dummy load, so I should, guess I should check the mic to see if it's still happening. But when I'm on the antenna out and back, it just, wow. It was buzzing bad, so. Uh, uh, maybe I was getting some reflective power back, but I had, we had everything tuned for a perfect visoire, so I'll have to look at all that. But uh, it's definitely getting some RF into the mic and into that speaker, this audio amp, so I'm going to have to change that. So uh, anyway, I, what I might wind up doing is I may wind up putting a, making a little small relay box so when I transmit it, it basically disconnects this audio amp. Because that's coming, it's, a, it's being driven from the out, the 10K output of the back of the transceiver, the 590SG. But I'll work on it, but I'm, I'm going to check next to see if this D104 is actually uh, still getting RF into it on dummy load. And that, it probably may not be since this went away, because this thing was buzzing bad. And now it's, it's completely gone, oh my god. So uh, I guess I should have started on dummy load first, but I had a perfect visoir and there was not much activity on 40, so I found a quiet spot in the band and I was doing it. So I'm tuned up on 40 meters. This thing may put out more power down on 80. I haven't checked it yet. 
but on voice peaks on single sideband, I get about two to 400 watts average on peaks, which is, you know, that's a, that's normal because 800 CW, which is you're going to get about half on phone. So that's normal. That's good enough for me. But if you have these amplifiers that have the two 3-500Zs, well, of course, it's double that. You get like six to 800 watts out on peaks usually, and you'll get the 1,500, 1,600 watts out on CW. That's how they work. But this little amp is perfect for me. I just got to take out the... Uh, take the case back off and I got to replace the meters. I, sh I did take a photograph, but I looked in the little manual that came with it and it doesn't say what the part number is. There's 16 volt lamps. So I'll probably find the same 16 volt lamps and I'll probably, I'll probably dim them down just a little bit by adding like a current limiting resistor in there. That way they can just stay on and they don't burn up. That'll be nicer. Oh, and by the way, uh, I did find, let me show you. I did find the Jennings UCS 375 vacuum variable from my RF deck here. Finally, this thing, and I measured it, I measured it last night. It touched 10 picofarads minimum with minimum C adjustment and 380 picofarads. It's supposed to be 375, but I'm seeing, we're seeing 380 with maximum adjustment. So this thing will fix my RF deck. I don't know if I told you, uh, years ago, or just, well, when I did the other videos, maybe I did it here last, last winter when I was doing the videos, but the, uh, the, uh, the, the plate cap I have in here, the plate tuning cap, was a big Chinese air variable cap. It was humongous, and uh, it was king size, right? And it was like a 360 picofarad cap. Well, I used to use this transmitter in Oklahoma. I used it on 160, 80, and 40, and when I was on 40, that capacitor was barely meshed because the minimum C was too high. So what I did was here, uh, I did I did a little bit in San Jose. I removed some of the plates, but when I brought this thing here to the new house here in El Dorado County, I, uh, I, I removed a couple more plates and I got the minute, the maximum C down to exactly 150. So it'll, it'll actually tune up on like 3.6 megacycles perfectly. The problem is the minimum C, because of the physical size and all the strays, is still about 40 picofarad. This thing won't even work on 20 meters right now. And this T368 exciter goes up to 17 max. So that's my plan. I'm going to put that vacuum verbal in its place. I'm going to try to retrofit everything. And then I'll get it, this thing working from, from 160 up to 17 with that, with that new cap. It'll get rid of all those strays. And the minimum C, like I said, it's 10 picofarads. So that's, all, that's, that's, that's more than low enough to make it work on 17. It'll definitely make it work on 20. But it'll, it'll probably work up to 15 if I did it. But I don't want to do that. I don't need 15 meters out of this transmitter. I think there's a way. Uh, where does it say? Or 20, oh, see, it'll go up to like 20. This thing will do 20 mega cycles. It'll it'll almost make you could you could tune this thing to cover. You could shift you could do the alignment on this thing where this position from 12 12 megahertz to 20 megahertz. You could shift it up. I could probably get this thing to work on 15. Other guys have done that before. I remember somebody told me years ago they made theirs work up higher by shifting that. But 17 is fine on this. I don't want to push the envelope too far, you know. Because what I'll probably do is I'll probably change the tap on the 15 meter position on this coil to peak it good for 17 to make it work better on 17 anyway. So, uh, but that's the plan. And uh, I'm going to, uh, I think I may put a turns counter knob on this thing. I found one that the knob sort of matched this, like this one. It's a little bit smaller though. It's got the, you just spin it around. But I was thinking... I do have some gear reduction attachments. I have one that I know will work on this, but I'm thinking if I, I could cut a little, you know, piece of aluminum and make the little red arrow and put the gear reduction so I could just spin the knob around to where the, the pointer, that red pointer would move real slow. And I might be able to get a, get away with doing that. I think I think this, this cap is... Uh, I think it's like 30 some turns. I have to look at it again. I got to look at the spec sheet, but I finally found that sucker. Those things are hard. Well, you can, there's another place that does have a few new old stock ones, but they want like $875 a piece for them. And there was no way I was ever going to pay that to, to fix this RF deck. This one was like a fourth of the price. So I got lucky. And this isn't, that's an original one down there. That's one of the very original ones. Also, I didn't show the last time. Uh, where did I put that now? 
I did get to, it was in my, my last couple of videos, I got one of these, uh, these, uh, V, V, what do you call it, VN Nano things, little network analyzer, VNA Nanos, I did get one, this one has the, uh, the F connectors on it, the other, other big other connectors on it, so, and I have the adapters for RG8 coax, so that's, that's good, but I don't want to take it out of the package, or the box again, I just put it away last night, it was sitting here, if you saw my last video, you'd probably see it in there, it was sitting there, one of my last videos, I probably, I meant to mention it, but I forgot, but here's my new key, wireless keyboard and mouse for my, uh, pan adapter, right now there's nothing there, because I'm on dummy load, I'm going to switch it back, so, that's where I'm at on this. I got the amplifier working. It does work. I'm getting full power out. The tube's good. It's working like gangbusters, so I'm really happy with it. So uh, the next step is to uh, change the components in that D104 and filter it to get the RF out of it if it still has. Well, I know it's going to have it with the antenna, so I have to fix it. There's no way around it. And I need to toroid all my cables and rearrange. Well, it, this is going to stay like it is. And what I did was... That's where my scope was and my counter. Well, I'm really only going to use that on the big transmitter anyway. So I thought, well, let's just put it up here. Bingo. See? So that's that's perfect. Because I stand here with this microphone in my hand when I'm checking it right. And I can just look up here and I can set everything. Then it's done. I don't have to have it down there because I really don't need this for the other, the other setup here. Not for sideband. So that's all for now. The Ameritron AL80, the original little jewel, it's working great. And uh, I'm sure glad I found it. I just need to fix those meter lights. And the guy looks like he had all the input circuit tuned fine because I didn't even have to use the built-in antenna tuner on the Kenwood to make it match. But I use it anyway just to be safe. But uh, all the input tuning, he must have it all set right. All There's an input tuning board right here on top. And oh, by the way, after I tighten this loose knob, I found out this thing does not have the 10 meter add-on. It does not. And there's a, there's a relay. There's a, on the PC board that's in there, there's a spot for that extra relay and the, uh, the, uh, the coil that goes in there. And I could, I'd have to add that, but I'm not sure the plate tuning on this thing, I'm not sure the coil on 15 meters would work. It, it might. I'm not sure. I need to read the manual. I'm not sure. It says this thing would work on the work bands, and I'm not sure you have 6.5 to 10 and then 16 to 24. Does that mean that when you're on the 15 meter position, it'll work from 16 meg to 24 meg? Maybe it's broad enough, and when you're on 40 or 80, I need to read the manual to see what that means, but I'm not sure what this graph exactly is. It looks like this thing was designed for 12 meters, maybe. So if it works from 16 to, 12, to 24 meg, well, then it would work on 17. But I'm sure, I, I know I can make this thing work on 17. Even just being on the 15 meter position should be fine. But I think, I'm not sure exactly, because see, look, now I got this fixed. It doesn't go over to the left anymore. What I did was I set it for the 160, so 80s online, 40, 20, and 15. And you can hear the relays on that board click as you change it. So, uh... This thing will work, I know, on 17. It was probably designed to also work on 12. I don't think we had an 83. Did we have 17 meters yet? I knew, I think we had 12, but what about 17? Maybe 17 came along after this amplifier was made. I need to check on that. So that's all for now. This is W5HRO, 73s.